All right, thank you. Well, welcome to Building Secure uh, Applications with Azure and Rust. I'm Ronnie Garrity. I'm the product manager for the Azure SDK for Rust, and I'm joined here today by Heath Stewart, our lead engineer on the project. And we're going to talk to you a bit about Rust today. So just over a year ago, uh, our team internally made the decision to take Rust into the fold of official Azure SDK languages. And we did this for a number of reasons that I'll talk to you uh, quickly before we get into the demo. But uh, as of this February, we released the first betas for our Rust SDK. So that includes our authentication, our identity library, as well as libraries for Azure Key Vault, Event Hubs, Cosmos DB, and as of last month, uh, Storage Blobs. Uh, so now, like I said, I wanted to kind of briefly explain why we decided to bring Rust into the official uh, Azure SDK fold. Uh, and first, I wanted to look at the benefits the language brings. So Rust's ownership and borrowing system help prevent common bugs like buffer overflows and use after free errors that by forcing developers to handle those at compile time rather than waiting and hoping you find them during runtime in your tests, and you know, even worse if you have to find them uh, while it's out in production. Uh, Rust also offers performance on par with C and C++, combining, uh, compiling down to efficient machine code with minimal runtime overhead. Uh, it gives developers the control over memory allocation and execution, allowing them to optimize for speed and predictability. Rust also has a rich ecosystem of libraries and tools that is growing day by day, which all enhance the developer experience. And the final reason is just the uh, demand for Rust, not just externally, but internally. There are a large amount of teams within Microsoft that want to build cool new tech with Rust, and we want to help support them and anybody else interested in using uh, Rust with Azure. So now a bit about how we're making the Azure SDK for Rust secure by design. And I've only got three things listed here. There are many more things we are doing, but we only have 15 minutes. Uh, so the first thing is in how we're handling credentials. Uh, the Azure SDK for Rust does not persist, cache, or reuse any security credentials. All authentication data is zeroed after use, so you don't have to worry about it uh, hanging around in memory for too long. Uh, we also help uh, protect against accidental uh, data leakage. Uh, we have a custom safe debug trait as opposed to the standard debug trait. Uh, our safe debug trait helps prevent PII from getting into debug output and log output, so you don't have to worry about any of that uh, making its way out into the open. And then finally, our secure uh, HTTP pipeline design um, helps us kind of implement security policies across all communications with any Azure uh, service in a similar manner. That way, you can be sure that you know no matter what service you're talking to, you're still using the same security policies and when you have to eventually go and audit or update those security policies, you only have to do it once, and it will then apply to all communications for any Azure services. So that was just a brief kind of description about why we took the uh, why we brought Rust into the official fold for the Azure SDKs. I'm now going to hand it off to Heath, who's going to show us a project he's been working on that includes the uh, Key Vault library from the Azure SDK for Rust. So take it away, Heath. All right, thank you, Ronnie. So as Ronnie said, as we released our first beta in February, and around that time, I wanted to make sure that we had a good user experience. We've been developing this for a while, but until you actually write a good app with it, you never find some of the nooks and crannies, and we've gotten more feedback since. So one thing my family and I use is 1Password, and I like their CLI, I've used it in some other stuff. I also work partly with our NSYS a little bit, so I had this idea, well, what if I wrote a CLI that actually uses Key Vault? And so that's what this, this new, a CLI that I created called AKV, Azure Key Vault, was meant to create. And what we can do with it is, so if we have some environment variables like you see here, I have X secret and we have some secret references in there. These are Key Vault URIs, nothing fancy about them. And as I go through the demo, you'll see how we're actually able to use this to provision applications. Uh, not only can you actually run applications uh, using environment variables that contain secrets, you can actually format files as well. So if you have a configuration file like a .env file you want to put into a Docker container, you don't need to check it in with secrets because that's you know bad. And like Ronnie said, we want to be secure. So 
the before we get to that, oops, is we used another product that our, my, our team actually works on, which is the Azure Developer CLI to go ahead and provision. I made sure to do this beforehand. Uh, you know, want to appease the demo here and make sure everything works. So everything is provisioned. We'll get to that in a bit here. So in order to connect to Azure Key Vault is, there we go. The pattern here, and we have the same, our, our mantra in the Azure SDK is basically idiomatic but consistent. If you look at all of our Azure SDKs across languages, they should have a similar feel, but they should always feel natural to the language. Here we went ahead and chose to use functions. I know that in Rust, there's kind of equal parts builders and functions. We chose kind of this constructor pattern. So to create a secret client, Key Vault Secrets, is you call new and you pass in your Vault URI, which I'm getting from the CLI, and a credential. And like Ronnie said, we want to be as secure as possible. So with the credentials, and we're, we're still figuring this out, looking for feedback, is when we do deploy with Azure Developer CLI or AZD, we know that if, if it was successful, we already have AZD credentials. So we only use this Azure Developer credential. And this is part of our Azure Identity Crate. If it is not deployed by Azure Developer Credential, well, then we have a chain token credential, something we have in other languages, but are considering here uh, whether we're going to actually ship that or not. And so, again, we're looking for feedback there. But what this is actually doing is it is either using the Azure Developer CLI, or if it fails to find the Azure Developer CLI or authenticate, it uses the Azure CLI or AZ command. And so you can create your own token credential. So stepping back then, oops. So now that we have our client, we want to actually get a secret from it. And the pattern we're using here is get secret. Right now, for those of you familiar with async and Rust, we do have two awaits. We are going to be releasing an update pretty soon that's just going to get that down to one await. The th this first one is actually making the initial fetch. And then as we're actually getting the body and deserializing it, we may fetch more you know, pages, more blobs from the endpoint. And so we have the two awaits. Now, the, the next thing to get into is, like Ronnie mentioned, is we want to be as secure as possible with the safety bug trait. And here's a perfect example of something that anybody that writes Rust is used to doing this. We all love the debug trait. It is so handy for so many things. We print it, we trace it. The problem is, though, is anything containing secrets or PII is going to leak out. So we don't want that getting into traces. Here you'll see I got a secret from it. If we actually go into that really quick, into the definition, you'll see, sorry, I'm going to go a few levels deeper here than I expected, that obviously we're going to have our secret, well, the actual secret, that the secret value, we don't want that to end up in logs. So if I go ahead and run this now, um, I had the buffer here. <laughs> well, while this is running here, so what it's actually doing is going off and it's looking for anything with a key vault URI in it. And it's going to mask that. So here we go. You see concealed by AKB. So that's going to contain the actual secret. But if we... So let me set the environment variable here that's actually going to show all the trace data. So if we scroll up a little bit, a um, little like finding a needle in a haystack. They shouldn't have actually printed that much. <laughs> now I'm not. Sorry, I'm not seeing it here. I think uh, when you say your anyway. environment variable, you used a comma and might have needed to be a period. No, that is actually, oh, here. Well, while this is running, we can move on. Effectively, we, um, we printed the secret to it, 
And the secret's gonna have that secret variable in there, or at least it should have, except that we use the safety bug. And that is going to only print the type information. I don't know why I saw it there. there, right? Replacing environment variable secret. No, that was something different. Um, all right, let me type. I know it was working here. Well, I don't, I was just working earlier. Um, apologies. The idea here is though with the safe debug is if you actually opt into a debug feature. So by default, it's only gonna print the type. We are actually working on a feature as well that should be in the next beta where library developers, so all the services that we work with can actually mark things as not containing PAI so we can show more. So the way that you as a developer can actually opt into that is to enable the debug feature of the crates. Oops, I passed it to the wrong thing, apologies. So this is actually enabling the bug feature. If you know how debug works, is it generates code at compile time. And so what it's doing right now is it's actually going through and figuring out all the different members and what it can print. And of course, since it's not, well, that's well, very unfortunate. Mm. <laughs> How much time do we have? Not much. Um, all right, so a few things that are coming up since we only have a few minutes left is we are actually working on pageables. Um, so what we call those across the, the different Azure SDKs is whenever you fetch resources that might actually have multiple pages. So like say on ARM, we're actually fetching all the subscriptions, all the resources. In Key Vault, for example, we're fetching all the secrets that might be across multiple pages. Is we wanna have the experience when you can iterate through that idiomatically in Rust, you can use all your different chain iterator functions. Is the pageables are gonna come back with all the different resources. And we actually do have that enabled already. It's just, it's a little more work right now. And so we're gonna bake this into the SDK. So the effective pattern here is that we get every single page and then iterate through the, the different values in that page. In Key Vault, for example, you can have uh, like a page two with no items in it and still have a page three with a bunch of items. We wanna flatten that experience so that no one ever sees that, that the pages may not come back with a consistent number of secrets. And so by the time you actually call into that, is the experience you're going to see is gonna be like any time you're iterating over anything else, is that we're gonna have a reader and we're just gonna go through uh, all the different items and print out those for you automatically. For those people that need it, we'll also let you go through page by page in case you wanted to say, save a URL um, to affect a uh, subsequent page by itself, like if you have your own results page. So both modes will option. We'll actually have the long running operations as well. So if you ever you call an API, like creating a certificate, which can actually take minutes, even days, depending on your processes, that you can actually wait on that output. And that's all gonna be baked into being a future in async Rust. So you'll just await that future and whenever it finishes, your code will continue. And of course, if it takes days, your code probably not gonna sit there and wait for days. So we'll also have a way that you can say, given some token, we want the code to actually go back in and check periodically with a brand new process running or a task, whatever makes sense for your use case. So this will all feel very similar to our other Rust, or sorry, our other Azure SDKs, but it should feel idiomatic to Rust because everything is using the async framework. And because async and Rust allows you to define your own async runtime, well, we will default to Tokyo, we're gonna to let you plug your own async runtime in as well. We have demands for that internally in Microsoft and customers outside of Microsoft also wanna use their own async framework. So we'll, we're gonna allow that as well, your own HTTP stack, whatever makes sense there. So it'll be very flexible. Oh, great, well, thank you, Heath. Uh, I'll just quickly 
switch over to this. If you want to scan that QR code, that'll bring you to our repository for the Azure SDK for Rust, where you can take a look at our uh, library so far. There are a ton more examples there, examples for each service library. So go take a look and try them out. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be around if you have any questions.